Trump. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. As you may know, my interview with President Trump making headlines all over the world. Don't show off about your interview with Trump, Bill. As you may know, of course you do, unless you're living in a cave. And if you are living in a cave, you're probably a terrorist, so I don't want you to watch it anyway. So another big week for the Trump administration. Let's talk about Iran. Why are they doing this echoey interview? It wasn't that echoey when Barack Obama was in there. Is there something in Donald Trump's hair web that's causing the Oval Office and its surrounding antechambers to go all echoey. Your assessment, uh, do you think we're on a collision course, we being the United States, with that country? I think it was the worst deal I've ever seen negotiated. I don't know how much you pay your hairdresser. I think it was a deal that should have never the been negotiated. Absolutely. They have total disregard for our country. Uh, they are the number one terrorist state. Number one terrorist state. Who decides all these things? One thing I'd like to talk to you about and continue to talk to you about is I've gone to university for about half an hour and it's capsized my entire previous personality is the way that systems, nations, ideas are categorized to maintain the hegemony of the powerful. Tony Blair said this thing once. He said, our ultimate weapon is not our guns, but our beliefs. That's a pretty crazy thing to say. Ours are not Western values. They are the universal values of the human spirit. And anywhere, anytime, ordinary people are given the chance to choose, the choice is the same, freedom, not tyranny. The spread of freedom is the best security for the free. It is our last line of defense and our first line of attack. Let's spend a moment with what Tony Blair said there when uh, justifying the attack on Iraq. <laughs> He said, the spread of freedom is the best security for the free. Freedom is a thing that you can spread. What, when you're saying the spread of freedom, what you mean is we're going to bomb people until they are free. Why? Because our best weapon is not our guns, but our beliefs. Ours are not Western values. They are the universal values of the human spirit. That's claiming that we, the, you know, he's speaking for us there, the Western world, the secular world, have access to a universal truth that what we believe in is true above what anybody else or what any alternative belief system proposes. And if other people don't have it, they're inferior to us and therefore bombable, torturable, destroyable. It also breaks down the same way as a religious belief. That is a religious belief to say we have got the access to ultimate truth. The human spirit is a universal thing. And it's our first, our last line of defense and our first line of attack. He's legitimizing attacking people on that basis. So there is no distinction between the secular, rational Western world and the irrational religious world. These are just ideas that are put forward to justify bombing some people. How that relates to Donald Trump is he is merely a more obvious pop celebrity symptom of an ideology that has long existed. This is the end point of liberalism. This is the end point of colonialism. This is the end point of manifest destiny. Trump is not a new thing. He is just a less pleasant wallpaper. Do you respect Putin? I do respect him. Do you? But Why? I, well, I respect a lot of people. <laughs> You don't. I've said a list of the people you don't respect. Basically, everybody in the entire world's in for a good old drubbing. And it's interesting that he mentioned the nature of time there because this is a narrative strand that we're pursuing that is commonly known or understood as the post 9 11 moment. 9 11, as the, that idiom suggests, 9 11, a subversion of the normal way we say the date. This is taken from an essay by a bloke called Brad Evans, a famous British academic. He said this, Brad Evans, that there are two global events that we have to look at. One, the coming down of the Berlin Wall. When that wall came down, it was a mass media event. We all saw it simultaneously all around the world and it represented the end of them and us. It meant that there is no separate, distinct communist Cold War narrative on the other side of that wall. We're all together now in the world of consumerism and interconnectivity. The second global media event was the coming down of the Twin Towers. It meant that there's no out there. Terrorists are among us now. We live at a time where the threat of terror is perpetual and constant and ubiquitous. So no measures, whether they are preemptive or uh, invade on our personal personal privacy, the privacy of the domestic population, or prohibit travel from people from overseas are too much because the terror is absolute. The other thing that happened at the time of 9-11 is the word terrorism shorted to simply the word terror. We used to have terrorism, the, a noun derived from terror. Now if terror itself is just having, ah, 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 it's never going to end. We're never going to be able to do anything that's enough. That means that the powerful are therefore licensed to do, to do whatever they need to do, both domestically and abroad. There will be no end to it until the natural conclusion Conclusion is total tyranny, both abroad and here. Well, I respect a lot of people, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get along with them. Putin's a killer. 
O'Reilly unable really to decide in that moment whether he likes that about Putin or just like, he's a killer, he's a bad boy. I saw a photo of him with his top off. His nipples were rubbery, like baby bottle teats. A lot of killers, you got a lot of killers. Why, you think our country's so innocent? No, not now I don't. <laughs> I think it's gone mental. You think our country's so innocent? I don't know of any government leaders that are killers in America. No. So what? I kill people. I use one of my tiny thumbs to crush a boy's skull butts in the schoolyard. Take a look at what we've done too. A lot of right. killers around, believe me. You mentioned ISIS. Can we expect, we the American people... You didn't get to think you based you and your wife, Bill. We. I mean me and Mrs. O'Reilly. She just... I, she's not over there. I don't let her out of the house. More U.S. military action against ISIS. You know, I, I hate to be evasive, but I you don't, don't have to tell like me specifically, about it. just I don't in like general. talking about it. I can say this, ISIS is bad. Oh, well, thanks for clearing that up, because often when I see a group of people lopping people's heads off in the desert, I wonder if they might be the new Beatles. They're evil. They cut off heads of Christians and Muslims and anybody else that gets in their way. Yeah, ISIS definitely are bad, but is the solution to that to do things that create ICCs, if you can pluralise such a thing. It's ironic that they're called Islamic State and that they want a state, and if they ever took were to get a state, then that state would include them in the sovereign conversation of nations and you'd no longer be able to condemn them as religious extremists. And the previous administration allowed it to happen because we shouldn't have been in Iraq, but we shouldn't have gotten out the way we got out. Right. It created a vacuum, ISIS was formed, I always said, take the oil. If you would have taken the oil, there would be no ISIS because they use that to fuel the you But if you took the oil, the Iraqi oil, you would have to put in U.S. troops to do that, and then that would have started another round. And you would have made a lot of money with the oil, and you would have had assets, and to the victor belong the spoils, and all of that. You big, great, daft pair of cows. We should have taken the oil. Yeah, we could have took the oil, put the oil over there, and then tried to reach it with their little grubby paws, and they wouldn't have been like, yeah, you're right, Donald. Yeah, I'm right, I'm right. What is this madness now? This is and how politics should sound, is it? Look, I suppose what this is is a continu continuation of a real balmy time around the the, uh, the inception of this notion that we're still living in the echo of 9-11. George W. Bush said, we have to secure the future. Can you hear just how impossible that idea is? We have to secure the future. You know the future. Is that everything that's not happened yet? That's right. We have to secure it. How can ever uh, that is an unfulfillable objective? Unfulfillable aims are being here currently pursued. That means there will never be an end to this. There will never be an end. It don't matter how much borders are closed, how many countries uh, are seriously or extremely vetted. Until there is a significant shift in the way that we see the rest of the world, the way that we see the other, the way that we see ourselves, a willingness to cooperate, a willingness to reach out in friendship, a willingness to change our own powerful institutions there will be no end to this. The elevation of Donald Trump has escalated this problem. It's made it more obvious and hopefully it's leading us to crisis because I no longer believe that the liberal progressive narrative will lead to a solution. I think crisis is going to be required and if we can rely on Donald Trump for one thing it's to lead us face first into a crisis and then perhaps real change can occur. That's some terrifying true news. <laughs> Subscribe here. a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trolls is like the news. If the news was true, I want some trolls. Let's have some trolls.